Hi there, welcome to Glasgow Science Centre. My name is Derek and today we're going to be making our very own midge eater. Come on, let's get those midges. Ah! So to make our very own midge eater, what we're going to need are a few things that you'll probably find around the house or you could pop down to the supermarket for if you need to get them. Uh, you'll need a two liter plastic bottle, rinse it out, make sure it's nice and clean. You'll also need a smaller plastic bottle, maybe about 500 milliliters or so some black paint and a paintbrush, that's optional if you like, uh, some tape, some scissors, a little bit of gravel, yeah, a sweaty old sock, oh, make sure nobody wants it back, a little bit of water, about 150 mils worth, some yeast, which you'll be able to find in the supermarket if you don't have any in the kitchen, a spoon, and a little bit of sugar. Now, what do we need to get on with making our midget eater? So to make your midget eater, you're gonna need your two liter plastic bottle. You've cleaned it out, given it a good old rinse. And at this stage, if you wanted to make it even more effective, you could paint it with some black paint. That's what the paintbrush and the paint are for. You see, midges prefer dark colors and the shade. So by painting it black, you'd make it much more effective. However, for the purposes of this demonstration, so you can see inside it, I'm not going to paint this bottle. However, the next thing I'm going to do is cut the bottle about two thirds of the way up so that it separates into two pieces. Uh, to do that, you need a pair of nice sharp scissors, roughly about two thirds of the way up. And I'm going to make a, an incision, being careful uh, with my fingers. If you want to, you might want to get uh, an adult to help with this bit. So just a nice cut all the way around like so, and just watch out because those edges will be quite sharp at this stage. Now, you don't want to throw away this part that you've cut off. You see, that's going to act as a funnel a little bit later on uh, for our midget eater. What we need to do at this stage though is take off the bottle top and make a hole in the center of the bottle top, again using the scissors. If you don't have scissors, um, well, I suppose you could always use a nail and a hammer to make a nice hole just big enough for your average size midge to get through. So that's probably about half a centimeter or so. Okay, so there's my hole Ta -da! in my bottle top and I can just pop that back on top like so. Now, here comes the interesting bit. What we're gonna do is lure the midges in to our midge eater. To do that, we need a little bit of yeast and some water and some sugar. When you mix all those together, the yeast are gonna produce lots and lots of carbon dioxide. And carbon dioxide is attractive to midges. So to make up our yeast solution, we're gonna make it up in another little bottle that will sit inside the bigger bottle like so. Again, I'm gonna cut this bottle just enough to hold about 150 mils worth of water. So again, carefully using your scissors, make an incision in this bottle, like so. Cut it all the way around. Da -da -da. Again, you might want to tidy that up. Just be careful with the sharp edges of the bottle. That's gonna act as a little receptacle for our water and yeast solution. So over here, I've got my 150 mils of water, which I'll pour in like so. Now we're gonna add some sugar to it so that we get a nice sugary solution that the yeast will love and will make them produce lots of carbon dioxide. So to do that, I'm gonna take a little bit of sugar and my spoon. Now it doesn't matter if you use warm water or cold water too much for this. Put in uh, two, tables, uh, two teaspoons fulls of sugar. We're gonna try and get that to uh, dissolve as best we can. Plenty of time for cleaning up later. Excellent, that's looking good. And then we're gonna take our yeast. Now, on the back of the packets of yeast that you get in the supermarket, there are some instructions. You can follow them if you choose but they tend to talk about baking bread and stuff, the normal things that you might use yeast for, not for trapping midges. But 
if you add a packet of yeast about a teaspoonful to that 150 ml of sugary water, that should be just about perfect for our uh, midge eater. So I'm just going to chop the top off of that, pour in the yeast like so, give it a nice little stir. We're gonna wash those midges right out of our hair. We're gonna wash those midges right out of our hair and have a splendid summer. Okay, next thing. That sweaty sock. The sweatier, the better, to be honest, at this stage. You see, midges are attracted to some of the chemicals that are in your sweat. And if we add a nice sweaty sock, then that's one more reason why our midges are gonna enter our trap. I'm gonna cover that yeast and sugary solution with our sweaty sock, nice and carefully, and then place this inside our two liter bottle. Inside here, we've got our sugary solution with the yeast, which is starting to react to produce some carbon dioxide. And we've got a nice sweaty sock filled with lots of pongy chemicals to attract those midges. At this stage, we can add some gravel to the bottom of our two liter bottle. The gravel will help it stay nice and firmly on the ground. See, we're gonna to want to put this outside where the midges are and where we don't want them to be. So to stop it falling over, in the light gusts of wind that we get here in Scotland, we're gonna add some gravel to the bottom. So, uh, nothing too special about this gravel just that it's quite heavy and should weigh down our midge eater. That's it, we don't want any of that heavy. Perfect, so far so good. Next, remember that funnel we made earlier using the bottle top with the hole in it? Well this is where it comes in. We're gonna sit that on top of our two liter bottle and then to complete the trap, we're just going to seal it up by taping it. So you could use masking tape if you wanted to, or sellotape, whatever's to hand. Remember, it is going to be outside, so the more waterproof it can be, the better, especially here in Scotland. So I'm just going to put a little bit of tape around this, to make it neat and tidy. Ta-da! One. Midge eater! Midges, of course, are going to be attracted to the trap, so you don't want to put it beside where you're going to be sitting out in the glorious Scottish sunshine. So put it somewhere nice and damp and dark in the garden, maybe in amongst some bushes or beside the flower bed, or if you're out camping in the field, maybe about eight or ten meters away from your tent. Actually, you can make a few of these and put them in a nice ring, form an exclusion zone for those midges. Midges are quite literally a pain in the neck. They bite and they bite and they bite, and it's not pleasant. Sometimes they even carry animal sicknesses. Now some people might be asking, well, why still get rid of the midges? But Scotland's got a huge, thriving population of midges. We simply don't need as many as we've got. So let's get rid of them by making a midge eater. It's a nice humane way to get rid of the midges in your garden. Why not give it a try? Send us in your pictures, your videos, and let's rid ourselves of the scourge of the midge with our sweaty socks and a little bit of yeast producing carbon dioxide. That's it, give it a try. Make your own midge eater. Ta-da! <laughs>